Shalom. At the start of our Parsha Kitavo, Israelites in the wilderness are asked to imagine all the blessings inside the land of Israel if they fulfill their part of the deal. At the end of the Parsha, those same Israelites are threatened with 54 verses of curses, detailing the punishments awaiting them, as Deuteronomy says, if you fail to observe faithfully all the terms of this teaching. The Talmud in uh, Masechet Megillah tells us that Ezra the scribe decreed that for all time the Jewish people would read the blessings and curses of our Parsha before Rosh Hashanah. Jews of the land of Israel, who in ancient times completed the cycle of Torah reading in three years, would not naturally read those threatening uh, chapters before Rosh Hashanah, as we do. They probably would have had to take out a second Torah scroll and read the curses in addition to the Parsha of the week. Why did Ezra believe it was critical that the Jewish people read the blessings and curses before Rosh Hashanah? I really like Abaya's explanation. So that the year may end along with its curses. As we finish the year, we read all of the curses, putting them behind us, as if to say, so should our troubles be behind us, they should end. After that, we can begin the new year with a new, clear, uh, clean slate. Maybe the reason why I like it so much, because it's hard for me to accept the theological nexus of cause and effect behind these verses. It's kind of uh, parenting behavior, presenting to a child the consequences of her action. I don't think it ever works. And I don't think Jewish people took it too seriously, whether it's right or wrong. Abaye is just an example of someone trying to give a different explanation. However, we found our own way. What Jewish people know the best is to create the factories of Bil'am in the language of Yehuda Michai, to turn the curses into blessings. In Masechet Ta'anit, the rabbis take verses from Megillat Echa and prophets that describe our troubles after the destruction of the temple and in the most creative ways turn them into blessings. That's the art I admire in our Jewish peoplehood, the art that makes our breed with God flourish. I will end with the verses from Piyut written by Avraham Hazan Girundi, the 13th century Sp uh, Spanish rabbi, Achot Ktana, little sister. The little sister, her prayer she arranges and her praises she recites. Please God, heal her illnesses now. May the year and its curses come to an end. Be strong and rejoice, and you shall ascend to Zion, and he shall declare, clear, clear your passes. May the new year and its blessings begin. And I will add, may we have an ability to turn the curses, if they come, into blessings. Shavua Tov from Shechtet.